everyone, I'm Luke Hector and you're watching The Broken Meeple. This is a YouTube channel about board games where I give reviews, top tens and my honest opinions regardless of the consequences. Get on with it. So tonight I'm taking a look at Skyrim the Adventure Board Game. This was kindly donated to me by Modifius Entertainment. And I'm kind of glad it was donated, more on that later. But this is basically an adventure game set in, well, the Skyrim universe. Remember that giant, like, monstrosity of an RPG game that came out, what? Must be at least a decade or two old by now. It was an ancient game, but still is played today, still is enjoyed by many. And I, personally, have enjoyed the game as well. I did buy it sort of shortly after it came out, and I played it for a bit, and I enjoyed it, and I thought this is great, like sandboxer, open world that I can just explore. Barely understood what was going on in terms of the story and the lore, and then I kind of ran out of time, had other priorities, and then stopped playing it for a while. But then when I came back, I couldn't get the hang of the fiddly controls, I forgot who everything was, or where everything was, I couldn't be bothered to start all over again, and I was just like, yeah, I'm kind of done, and I just didn't bother playing it again. Same happened with various other games like Witcher 3 and stuff like that. It's just the time commitment to play those RPGs on the PC is too much for me. I just can't do it anymore. I used to be an adventurer like you. And I took an arrow in the knee. So yeah, I'm not exactly an aficionado when it comes to the Skyrim lore, but I've got a general gist of the setting and what the game was about on the PC, but this is a little bit different. This is not quite the whole story of the Skyrim PC game, this is just more another story set in this universe. But essentially you'll have a character from the start, which can be from one of several characters you'll recognise from the game. You'll start off on the map at one location, and then on your turn you draw event cards which set some story elements in motion, and maybe throw up a few side quests here and there but essentially you'll decide where to move on the map within a few spaces go to that space and then you can do things like explore a dungeon to take out some monsters you can go to a city in order to trade in the market or get some meet some characters or you can go fulfill quests that will pop up either via the main story but also from side quests that just sort of appear and you've got that uh, that funky little pointy marker as from the game to help you track these things on the map and it's essentially a sandbox experience. You have a story to follow and there is certainly an objective to pass each chapter but how you go about it is up to you and as much as you can gung-ho straight for the plot don't recommend that. You might want to get some other stuff done first, but there is a ticking time bomb because as you go through the game, threat is mounting up all over the map, cities are closing their doors, they don't want to trade, monsters are roaming around the place, and so you kind of have to push your luck to an extent as to how much you want to, you know, spend time having fun around this world before you actually, oh yeah, I need to get on with the plot at some point. Now on a positive note, there's a decent amount of content, but we'll get to the why I put decent in quotes later on, but you've got a good 600 cards worth of content for the side quests and main story marks and that, so you there is a decent amount of replay value in the game, but you are going to rinse repeat a decent amount from the main quest. It's really just going to depend on what side quests happen to turn up. There's only so many events for each chapter. And so a lot of it is just going to be a case of you going around the board and just having a look round, basically. Which kind of is, you know, it makes sense thematically to what you did in Skyrim, frankly. I mean, you could gun-ho the main quest line and finish the game in a few hours as far as I'm aware. But most of the time you walk around down a path and you hear something about a local guild in the next town. You're like... Yeah, you know what? Well, yeah, I'll head over to there. And that's kind of what this game is really forcing you to do. If you, I, I kid you not, I was still learning the rules and I went through the tutorial, more on that in a minute, and got into the first quest and I thought, let's just carry on with the story for the first bit and see how long it takes me. It took me 30 minutes. 30 minutes to solo the main quest in the first chapter of the game. Now, I know the first chapter is meant to be shorter, but 30 minutes is kind of ridiculous. I think I had to do two things and then the thing was over. Ah. Yeah, this game pretty much is telling you don't finish the main quest until the last possible minute. So okay, what about these checks that you do and all that stuff? That's got to be good, right? It's mainly just die rolling. That's essentially what it is. It'll tell you to roll so many of a particular symbol of which there's three and it's easier to roll one than others. And it's a lot of die rolling. And you can push yourself to like spend stamina points in order to roll more dice. Between each combat encounter, you reset your health, which is kind of weird. Although technically that does happen in the Skyrim game. So as much as that's not thematically making any sense for like anybody who goes into combat, it makes sense to the PC games or so we'll let them off. But that's essentially what most of the adventure is in this game. You find some random sentence of flavor text, you roll the dice, see if you get it, and then there's a pass or fail. 
again, there's not really much in the way of narrative to tie things down. And when you start doing a bunch of these side quests, there's nothing really to conjoin it all together. So it really doesn't do a great job of building up the world. It's just throwing random stuff at you and you're just going into the wild and just seeing what turns up. Although if you have played Skyrim before, it doesn't really matter because the world building in the RPG PC game was not the best anyway. I mean, yeah, it had its own world, it had its own people and its own cities, but it's not like the game really held your hand and told you what was going on. I was confused as to who various people were in the PC game alone. I'm just like, you know, I'm just meandering around and leveling up my character. I mean, my character's cool, but I ain't got a clue who the blades are or this assassin guild is or who this dude is on top of the tower or you know, on top of the hill, the, the house that Jack built. It's like, I don't know. But in this, it's even worse. You know, the, the story element is pretty much non-existent. This is not a narrative game by any means. It says the adventure game. It's not the storybook game. Because these cards have got such a minute amount of flavor text on them for what's going on. You draw a card and it literally might be a sentence that says, so-and-so buys you a couple of drinks at the bar and chats to you about some uh, work he needs help with. That's it. There's your flavor text. Do you know who this character is? No. Do you know what these things are? No. It just launches you straight into a die roll check and just goes with it from there. So there is no real strong narrative here. I mean, even in the chapters, like the start of each chapter and that, there's not a great deal of plot or story here. It just feels like it's... It feels like this IP has been taped onto this game. It could have literally just been called Fantasy RPG The Adventure Game. There's Easter eggs, of course, are plenty if you have played Skyrim and you know it like the back of your hand. But for a lot of people who are kind of casual to that, there's not a huge amount here to tie it to the IP. And tying it to the IP has probably done it more damage than it has good. Mainly because tying things to proper intellectual properties, particularly when you're dealing with Bethesda and like multi-million pound companies that have these properties, you're going to be paying the ends of the earth for that IP, which means that the cost of the game is astronomical. Wow, if you got this on GameFound, you got a... Adequate game for the price, okay, and for in terms of the content and the components and that, you got a reasonable deal if you got this on GameFound originally. Because I think you got it for like 70 bucks plus shipping, and which is not exactly a cheap game, but it's better value. This in retail costs 125 pounds. What? Wow, okay, you are approaching Gloomhaven territory there, okay, and I still don't want to pay that kind of money for Gloomhaven. You know, to pay that kind of money for this, is frankly, I think, downright robbery. You know, the board is huge and massive. Great. But it's not like the artwork in it is particularly great. I mean, it's mostly just greyish mountains and some roots on it. And I can't even tell easily where the different, like, areas, the counties, are sectioned off because the lines kind of blur into each other. And... That's not great for the price, but then on top of that, you just get, what, like six little basic miniatures that aren't anything to really go by. You get not a lot of artwork on the cards. I mean, there's more artwork on these character cards than there are most of the cards in this 600 set. You get a pretty basic, you know, you know, plastic, uh, plastic, no, sorry, cardboard board with dual layer that you can put some tokens in. And, you know, you got a bunch of cards, yes, but no artwork to speak of. The dice, yeah, they're custom, but there's nothing to write home about. And oh my word, these tokens. I hate these tokens. You have a bunch of these tiny little tokens. They are so tiny, you probably can't even see them that well. These represent your XP, your money, your magic stones, your whatever else you've got in this game. And they are so fiddly. I mean, they, they've got a white number on the back to represent multiples of the same thing. And that's fine on a green symbol, but white on white doesn't work. It's annoying trying to see what number it is on the XP tokens. And then the gold and the plant look practically the same. They are both darkish green. It's just one of them's a bit more darker than the other. It feels fine for a 60, 70 buck game, but for 120, and this, bear in mind, to get expansions, you need to pay about 80 pound for each of those expansions for more chapters. To get upgraded minis for the roaming monsters, because normally all you get is a tiny little cardboard token, the minis for them, another 80 to 90 pounds. This is a game that is going to force anybody at retail to be spending in the regions of 360 pound plus to get it. That is frankly ridiculous and it's not like any of that money went towards the rule book because this rule book is well to put it too fine a point garbage 
It really is. Now, this is a scenario book, okay? Fine. I'll get onto that in a minute, though. But a glossary of icons on the back of the book, fine. There's a map in the book, great. Not that you really need it because you've got the board in front of you. But this rule book is written in a weird as hell fashion. I mean, stuff is out of order. You know, the text reads really weird. The you know, There's not a lot of uh, pictures to explain a lot of stuff. It's mostly just text and text and text. There's iconography all over the place. And then, I kid you not, the tutorial, which I swear was an afterthought, has errors in it. I played through the tutorial to learn this game, and it's not only a dull, I mean, it's a dull tutorial. It, like, barely anything happens in it, and it's just like, oh, you just do a little bit of this, and there you go, there's a tutorial done. But it has rules errors in it. It tells you to look for stuff in the main rule book, and it gets the page references wrong. It's got errors. A tutorial should not have errors. Rule books should not have errors. This is why people like Paul Grogan and that did rule books, okay? So he didn't have this problem. I don't, I can't accept something that's costing £120 to have such blatant rule book issues. Because this should be the thing that some of that money should go on. But it's clear that the money has literally just gone into the Skyrim license and not a lot of other aspects of this game. Skyrim, at the end of the day, for me, is a bit of a disappointment. You know, I, I don't adore the Skyrim theme as much as some people do. I liked the game when I first played it, and I played it and played it, had fun, and then eventually stopped, and then I've never gone back since. So I can, I can review this without needing the nostalgia goggles here. But there are some good elements to this, and most of it is due to the sandbox nature of the game. I can go to where I like, do whatever quests I like, be up with whatever characters, there's some branching side quests, you don't have to go straight for the plot, and like I say, if you want to stand any chance of succeeding in this game, you shouldn't, but it is quite a cool little like concept of pushing your luck, seeing how far you can get before the world goes to pop, before you then try and cash in the main quest, and you know, it's nice that some dynamic events do occur where suddenly, you know, things start popping up on the map that you weren't hoping for or you've got to watch out for this extra threat and the threat management is cool because then you can almost kind of cherry pick which stuff is going to succeed and fail so there's definitely some fun elements here but for the money you pay i struggle to recommend this game 120 pounds plus and that's just for the core set you only get two campaigns three chapters each and that's it it will cost you another 90 pound to buy another chapter you know another sorry another campaign and there's two of them so that's 180 odd pounds and then you've got the miniature upgrade which i certainly don't recommend you do unless you really love this game in which case that's another 80 pounds that's a lot of money, and for that you're not getting the best of components. I mean, yeah, you've got a tray to hold everything. whoop be doo I expect that to be standard. But you don't get any decent artwork anywhere because the board is bland, there's no artwork on most of the cards, and the rest of it is just image ported from the game. And then you've got to deal with the fact that you've got a rule book, which is woefully inadequate for the game that it is. I mean, it really should have been a much better looking and well-crafted rule book. But then on top of that, you've got this sort of really dull afterthought of a tutorial system that does an adequate job of getting you into the game mechanically. That is, if you're willing to forgive the fact that you have to use some common sense as to where half the stuff it's referring to is in here because of the rules errors it has. God knows what the FAQ must be like on Board Game Geek. I'm sure there's an extensive one. But for the money and the license, it's not acceptable to have errors or bad rule books or you know, woeful components in some respects. This is 2023. I feel like this is something from maybe a decade ago when Kickstarters first came about and these sort of things were a problem that you saw in a common sense. Sorry, in a common, like, uh, common air. You know, basically, you saw this stuff. It happened. But nowadays, I expect better. Skyrim, the adventure game, is. Fun for some, and there's definitely some lovers of it, and I'm sure they're gonna make themselves known in the comments. But for me, the best I can give this is a five out of 10. It's average. I get some enjoyment from playing the game and doing some of the story aspects. I get some enjoyment from the sandbox nature of it. And the combat is mainly just dice check it, um, dice chucking, but it essentially does allow you to sort of like, feel like you're powerful going up against a lot of different enemies. But there's just too much wrong with other aspects of the game to recommend this, particularly at that price. If you've got it on Game Found for 70 bucks, maybe I could bump this up to a 6 out of 10. Or maybe even a 7, maybe? Nah, 7 not right. Nah, 6 probably. And I almost contemplated making this a 4, below average. But I feel like there's enough here to gather some interest. Unfortunately, it's not justified with that price tag. 
So that's it for me on this quick draw review. I don't know if it was quick. I feel I spent a lot of time talking on this one. But if you like what you see, please remember to thumb this video up on YouTube and on Board Game Geek when it goes live. But of course, check out the Patreon if you want to help support the channel and leave your comments down below with your thoughts on Skyrim in general and this board game. You know, does a lot of stuff appeal to you? Does it not? Are you one of the ones that actually really loves this game? In which case, let us know why in the comments. And if you agree with me, then by all means, let us know why in the comments as well, because people need to get more opinions than just mine on something as big and pricey as this. Do you feel £120 justifies the, you know, do you think that's a justified price tag? I'd sure love to know your thoughts on there. But I think we got a lot to talk about and I'd love to hear more. So take care and remember, regardless of whether you know the Dragonborns come or not, it's still only a game. Bye for now.